Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today, we find ourselves in Nebraska, deep in the farming part of our nation. And our very special guest is General Giant at six foot four, 285 pounds. He is uh, Saron Francisco. Saron, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? Interview number two. I'm excited to yep. talk to you today. Yes, sir. Let's talk about how it all started for you at five foot four. You were at Douglas Bird in Fayetteville, North Carolina. You'd never wrestled before as a sophomore in high school, but yet you found a true and uh, an abiding love in the sport. Uh, was it the challenge of the sport, the challenge of learning, that really uh, fired you up? Uh, I'm not sure what it was that you know drew me back into it, but I remember I hated it. So I think I went back because uh, some of the older guys I hang around with was wrestling, so I was just trying to be part of the crowd and – I ended up going to practice and going through all the stuff they were going through. So <clears throat> by the time I, I got a little size on me, I, my confidence came along with it. So. <laughs> you are getting ready to graduate this December with a degree in special ed from Concordia uh, uh, College. And what what's great about that is that you want to continue to give back and teach uh, in, in with your degree in special ed, but you're going to continue to wrestle. It was, yes, sir. I was, I was uh, made aware of that you were going to be leaving Concordia, leaving Nebraska, a state that you had never visited prior to going to school there. Uh, you're going to be heading to Virginia, a state you have wrestled in at the Virginia Nationals. Right. Uh, but it was at Virginia Nationals where your life took a sudden turn. You mm. were noticed by a cat named Dana Vogt. He's uh, obviously your coach, but he saw you and saw that, that's the biggest high school kid I've ever seen in my life. He said, You're right. You know, while you started at five foot four, you quickly grew into the stature of the man that we now know as being one of the most powerful wrestlers in the NAI. Uh, how do you, how do you see your life in wrestling today? And then we'll talk about the next step. Um, today, I mean, wrestling plays a big part of who I am just because of the, the lifestyle you have to live to, uh, be successful, you know, a lot of guys with my uh, resume can't say that they achieved as much as I did in college, you know, having only wrestling once a uh, full season in high school. So <clears throat> right now I'm just thankful to be where I am, but I know that it wasn't easy. So I take pride in, you know, you everything I have right now. You take pride in your body too. I know that you work out well, but you're one of those body types that uh, you can look at a stack of weights and just put on muscle. So give me a little bicep shot here. <laughs> Maybe I can. They're, there it is. That, that's a massive muscle. <laughs> How did the Tar Heel State ever let you go? I don't know. <laughs> I would have been, if I was a coach of the Tar Heel State, dude, I would have been at your door every day. <laughs> yeah. So you, end up, up. You, you end up at Concordia getting a great education. Uh, you're a, a popular cat on, camp, on campus, but at one point, you run into the Paulson twins, Travis and Trent. Uh, yes. And then you become friends with them. Uh, right. Obviously, you, you've paid attention to what's going on with their careers. They both get hired by the University of Virginia, Charlottesville, and uh, they're firing up that regional training center in a big way, and they make the invitation to you to come out and be a part of that. How important was that? Oh, uh, that was, I mean, I, I haven't really fully uh grasp you know how great it is but I'm, I'm it's once i get there i think i will but i'm i'm super you know thankful for those guys because uh you know training freestyle is one of the things that i put on my goal list and you know when they restaffed iowa state i was kind of uh discouraged because that was my original plan was to go where Trent travis were at the time but um uh, right away as soon as they you know, set foot in Virginia, they didn't forget about me. So that just shows that, you know, how great of guys they are. And, you know, we, we connected right away when I met those guys. So I'm looking forward to what we could do together. Once you're friends with them, they have a, a, a great ability to be lifelong friends. They're, they're not the guys that just pass it like ships in the night. These are guys that are with you for the rest of it. They believe that you have an incredible upside. In other words, a really bright future in freestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually surprised you haven't taken a look at uh, uh, Greco because of your incredible strength. 
Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on training some Greco just for the sake of freestyle and, uh, you know, the positioning and the parterre and everything. I want to kind of be well-versed in both just so I could be really good in one of them. One of the biggest transitions you're going to have to make is going from six to seven minutes uh, or a full seven minutes anyway on the international scene. Can you talk to us about transitioning in your head uh, from co collegiate style to freestyle? Uh, I honestly think I'm going to uh, do a lot better in freestyle just because of my style of wrestling. Uh, I love being on my feet. and uh, I believe in my skills in the neutral position. So uh, freestyle definitely fits me. And um, I'm, I'm ready to just make that, that transition. I think it'll be pretty smooth. You think, um, as, as you view your, your athletic abilities, God gave you the body uh, and, and the mind, but uh, transitioning and, and learning technique mm -hmm. uh, where early on you, you were just a big body using your strength, now you're really using your mind and your body. Can you right. talk about that? Yep. Uh, I just had a lot of help, you know, the NAI is uh, is overlooked, but, you know, there's a lot of good wrestlers that were able to develop. You know, you get that attention once you go to a small school, whereas you go to a Division One or a Division Two, and you are expected to already have the, the package. So I was able to hone in on the skills I needed. And so I just peaked at the right time, and I'm still learning. i got to believe that, you know, in the, in the – that transition from uh, sophomore to junior year where you grew nine inches. Uh, at, at some point you said, ah, heck with it. I'm just going to wear shorts, right? <laughs> yeah, it was a <laughs> big growth spurt. I was, uh, I ended up, I, I went to Westover High School where I was smaller. And uh, that summer where I transferred to Douglas Bird, um, I don't know, I just grew so much. And when I went back to school, I saw like my coaches recognized the difference and, <laughs> It was just football was the main thing, but you know my mind was already set on wrestling. So you were a uh, you were a football player originally, and right. and I think it was your offensive line coach at Douglas Bird that said, "Hey, he's also the wrestling coach." He said, "Maybe you could give wrestling a try because they needed a heavyweight." Uh, right. They um, yeah. The coach, the coaches there, they were they were pretty much in every sport. Some of the football coaches coached basketball and coached wrestling. So. It was a pretty easy thing, a decision. And then my uh, my older brother was also my my trainer at the time. He definitely influenced me a lot. So you talk, are you talking about set. Devin? Devin, right? And you call him your god brother? Yes, sir. What does that mean? Um, uh, it's really uh, in a literal sense, you know. God, I think God placed him in my life because uh, he was definitely the one who helped me get to. Um, basically, to, he, he drove me to Virginia, you know, and we went to a lot of tournaments together. He was always in my corner in high school, and I think uh, a lot of my success I owe to him because of how much time he put in with me. We trained a lot. He took me to lift weights and stuff and just kind of gave me the the, um, the specs on wrestling. Everything he knew, he taught me. So You have two younger brothers and your mom, and your mother perhaps is your greatest uh, fan of all. Mm -hmm. She was there for you, supporting you, encouraging you, screaming. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, are you are you excited? You're going to be that much closer to your family. I think she's more excited than I am, Scott. So <laughs> it should be fun. I got to tell you, um, I'm so glad you didn't choose basketball. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> there'd be a lot of injured players on the court. You are a big man. I mean, if you go into the paint, people leave. Right. <laughs> you know? And I and I remember the story that said that you were usually shooting the basket in the wrong hoop anyway. So. Yeah, my mom, she, she'll she never let me forget that. So <laughs> hopefully I can win a world title. Then maybe she'll throw it to the side. <laughs> your mom is, her name is Cedrica, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And your grandmother, she's always been there for you as well. Um you know, family obviously has been an important part. Did that, uh, an important part of your life, did that play a role in deciding what type of degree you would go after in college? Um, in a way it did. Uh, I, I was the first to go to college, so I kind of just, I think I set the bar for my younger brothers in a way. But um, they are going their own paths, and 
I think just them seeing me and knowing that, you know, they they can do it as well was uh it's just it's just great knowing that. Um as far as my decision and my my major, uh one of my coaches in high school was the special ed teacher. So I spent a lot of time with him in his class and I feel I felt like it would also it'll be fun just to, you know, be able to hang out with those kids and if I was, you know, if maybe if I could be their teacher, I can even, you know, help them academically. So that influenced my decision a lot more than my family did. Where did where does the drive to to compete, to train? Where does that come from? Because you spend a lot of hours in the wrestling room um, for the brief time that you're actually on the mat in competition. So mm-hmm. where where does that drive come from? Um, my drive is just knowing knowing how far I come. You know, there was a time where I couldn't score a takedown on anyone. I wasn't even the best guy in my room. So when I compete, it's just basically like uh, putting all my work into, you know, a seven-minute span. And it's just that, you know, that little bit of uh, that that sigh of relief, like it was worth it, you know. You know, some some guys would maybe want to go takedowns on you just to see if they could get a takedown on you. I would never be uh, that brave. I would rather challenge you to a ping pong match. How are you at ping pong? I'm really good at ping pong. Uh, Trent Travis, no. Uh, I I, I beat him at Iowa State, so. (laughs) They're not good ping pong players, though. Travis and Trent, not good. They're not good golfers. They're not good ping pong players. But they're dang good wrestling coaches. Let me tell you something. As kids... uh, in their high school in Council Bluffs, they absolutely dominated the state. And then they decided to go to Iowa State and wrestle for Coach Bobby Douglas. I can still remember the interview I did with them at Vets Auditorium in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, at, at the conclusion of their senior campaign. And they were so ultimately so confident. i got to mm. believe that helps guys like you uh, get that type of confidence as well. Would you say that's true? Yes, sir. Um, I, I remember... I received a text from Travis. It was late in the night, and he told me he said you could be an Olympic champion if you uh, if you get in the right environment. And shortly after that, um, you know, headed to Virginia with him and his brother. So that goes to show how confident they are in coaching and how confident they are in me. Now, here's where that confidence pays off. The first time you and I interviewed, I gave you two opportunities. One was to talk with Bill Zadick, and the other was to talk to Gerald Briscoe of the WWE, who absolutely is interested in you, but you're not interested in professional wrestling. Instead, you want to continue to pursue your career. So you made that call to Coach Zadick, right? Yeah, I, I uh, shot him a text message uh, that same day we talked. So, what, what? How did that conversation go with uh, Coach Zadick? He's got his hands full with, yeah, you know, re- reinventing uh, the freestyle program with USA Wrestling. How did that right. conversation go? Well, he never got back to me, which I expected. Um, I know he's a busy guy, and at the time, I think they were in a. They might have been in Brazil. Okay, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, it would have been about that time. Yeah, that so. makes sense. Well, now it's now it's time for you to uh, catch his attention mm-hmm. by example, showing him yes, what sir. you can do on the mat. And UVA, I'm knowing what I know, having been to Charlottesville, I will tell you it's a beautiful community. Are you pretty excited about going? Yes, sir, I am. And your yes. departure date will be what December? Yeah, I leave in December, so hopefully, and I'll be training, you know, until I go there. So. Once I get there, I hope to compete right away and just, you know, see what I could do and go from there. You know, I'm excited to get better. I, I know the pauses are technicians and they work hard and I'm ready. I, you know, I soak up information quick and knowing that I'll have, you know, a lot of partners in a room, I'm excited. I'm just excited to go. You're excited to learn some of that knowledge they possess and that's, that's yeah. fun. And are you done growing, Sharon? I believe so. I'm, I'm done growing up. I'm growing out now, so <laughs> I don't want I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear you growing out. <laughs> you have uh, incredible physique, uh, monstrous strength, but uh, you know, and and quickness too. You're uh, you're you're a pretty darn quick guy for your size. I can't wait to see uh, the wrestler you grow into in the freestyle ranks, and 
and I'm super excited that you're going to be uh, uh, training some Greco as well. Uh, a couple different opportunities await you on the world stage, and that would be either the world championships in Greco or freestyle, and of course the uh, the Olympic uh, Olympic opportunities that await you as well. Who do you want to thank on the way out? Uh, I want to thank all my coaches. You know, over the years, everybody that's put time into me. You know, they they all saw potential, and uh, you know, I had to thank God. You know, that's the head of everything. So. Because, one, you know, without him, I wouldn't be anything. So, thank God and my family. Folks, you could be a part of the success of this young man. I want you to log on to CavalierWrestlingClub.org. It's there you'll find the description of what's going on uh, with that regional training center located in Charlottesville, Virginia. The head coach there, of course, is Trent Paulson. Uh, he recently relocated there with his wife and uh, children so you can be a part of the future as uh, as you might know we have a big guy that's been a friend of ours for a while now and been on the show uh, but uh, i believe the the best of uh, surround francisco is yet to be seen i think we're looking forward to see him absolutely monster and master his way through the sport and he'll do it in virginia for all of us at takedown i'm scott casper our special guest of the nike hot seat today is around francisco he will be a graduate of Concordia this December with a degree in special ed. And then we get to see him put on uh, USA Wrestling singlets and wrestle for the United States of America. What an opportunity. Saran, thank you for the time today. Thank you. For all of us at Takedown. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott Kessler.